Welcome back. Today we're going to tie Kelly Gallup's Mini Nancy P. Um, I've tied this one, uh, the Nancy it itself, I've tied this a few times on video. Um, once with the multi-cam on the full size. We're going to go to the Mini here. Um, but more importantly than that, I want to highlight a, a, a way that I tie this one that is my absolute go-to in the spring on the Missouri. Uh, it, it just lights it up it, it, there's no other way to put it this is one of my favorites it's an olive and blue combo um it, it's just a phenomenal pattern absolutely deadly on the mow um haven't really had a chance to fish it many other places i would like to take it down to hebgen and you know on the madison proper and everything and really get a chance to fish it there but uh we're gonna go ahead and start on this one like i said this is a mini olive and blue today imitating the blue that we see on a lot of the crayfish um, you go on the Missouri in the spring you go down to Hebgen they have almost a fluorescent blue to some of them um, and it, it's just um, I, I think the fish is key on that on that color and it, it, it shows because they, they absolutely tear this thing up so what we're gonna do is I've got three rubber legs right here. This is gonna be our antenna. Um, I've got three rubber legs. I'm gonna take a look at this. I may cut it down slightly. We'll see. Uh, no, I think we're gonna go with this. We're gonna go three and we're gonna have a total of six rubber legs coming out this backside. And I want this about one and a quarter times the length of the hook so I'm gonna set this down set the antenna in I'm not worried if when I when I get done tying this in and I look at it and it's a little short or, or a little long excuse me I'll take and just trim these off a little bit when I first put these on I'll go at a minimum one and a quarter times the length of the hook sometimes a little bit longer just to make sure that I have enough length on that and then uh, trim them as necessary. So I'm just gonna take this, and you saw me before, I went under these legs and straight onto the bare hook and then just pulled tight. If you run all of your wraps straight down here and it's just on the rubber leg, there's a good chance that it's gonna wanna rotate on you. Um, no matter how tight you tie these down, there's a chance that it's going to rotate. So if you take that one wrap onto a bare hook, it secures it into place a little bit. Well, a lot better, actually. So. I'm just going to take and tie that in for some consistency on the body. And I'm not really... I'm going to leave myself about an eighth of an inch right up there to tie in the the rabbit and I'm not really tightening down on these wraps right here just yet I don't want my rubber legs going every which direction I kind of like them sitting just flat right back like they are right there and let me get these some of them are stuck together yet there we go now everything's starting to come into shape and then once again I'm just going to go right around onto some bare hook. I'm going to really tighten down and then have that nice and secure. And then our antenna is tied in. I'm still not going real heavy. I'm not pulling real tight right at the very back of this because that's going to have a tendency to really flare those legs out. I want them to sit just nice and splayed out. I don't want them flared completely. It's, you can see they're still kind of hanging back there naturally. So everything looks pretty good to me. I'm going to take... Uh, now I'm good with that length right there. I want to keep that length as it sits. And before I get going too much further, i got to make sure that I have some sort of wire here. There's a brassy wire. That should work. That should work. 
Now I want to go with a cactus chenille. Typically when I do these, I'll take and do like a, uh, a medium estaz, something a little bit on the duller side. Um, like a more dull olive. But for these ones, I want to I want to exaggerate these, uh, I want to exaggerate the olive on the body slightly. So I'm going to go with this cactus chenille. It's, it's a medium. Um, you could probably go with the small on these minis, but the, the medium's going to work just fine. So now we'll take, we'll get those kind of straightened out a little bit, tying in just the cotton on that cactus chenille. I'm going to get two wraps in there, two to three, give that a good anchor. Make sure on your underneath side right there, you can see we don't have any gaps or anything. We've got good coverage. And then back to wrapping the body on this. A couple of wraps, anchor. A couple of wraps, anchor. And then I'm going to squeeze one more in there taking it right to where I left off with that antenna, right where the rubber legs are setting. And that body looks a little bit thick on this medium, or on the uh, on the mini. Um, it's a little on the heavy side, but uh, definitely not going to be anything to, to worry about. If, if you only have medium, um, and you don't have small or whatever it is, that's not really going to be a big effect. You'll see as we progress in this fly. Um, there's going to be a lot of coverage and it's not going to stick out as much as it does right there. So now we're going into, this is a two-tone rabbit strip. I found these last year, I think they were brand new. This is a key lime and a baby blue. And I saw this in the hairline magazine and as soon as I saw it, my mind instantly went to the Nancy. And I'm like, that's going to make an absolute killer crayfish. The... Blue is dang near perfect. The, the olive is a little bit on the bright side. I would like for it to be dulled down. But um, I haven't had any experience of this, this olive or the, the lime, whatever it is, um, really turning any fish away. They, like I said, they just tear this thing up. So... For now, I want to take and get a decent measurement on this. I want my, I want the rabbit strip to come back past the antenna. Um, how I want this to sit is with that hide right there. I want it almost the entire way back, those rubber legs. So I'm going to lengthen that out just a touch more. I may have like a quarter of an inch of rubber legs left from where that hide ends. Let me just get a quick look at that. That looks about good to me. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off. And then if you want to, you can notch these. You really don't have to. I'm just going to take some off the sides here. Um, if you're using magnums, definitely you'll want to notch them. But for these, uh, for these standard rubber legs it's it's not really necessary so i get a couple of good wraps in there get everything nice and clean and then i'll start to pull tight i don't want it i'm not pulling real tight on that just yet i just have it nice and secure at this point and then i'm going to get the exact same length on this one that i have on the other one So, we'll get the same length working right here. Once again, we'll go ahead and notch this. Get the rabbit hair out of your nose. And then again, we'll just tie this in nice and clean one two three 
check your length here make sure that those are good everything looks pretty good to me I'm happy with how that's setting now I just want to go ahead and get this tightened up I'm going to clean this up with a few thread wraps work my way to the back and then once I get to that point where I have those I have my thread even on both sides I'm worked back a little bit I really want to take and pull this down and what that's going to do is help to flare those legs out even more so there we're sitting right like so everything's looking pretty clean on that everything's looking pretty well even if you want to to uh, oh, I'm losing my train of thought there if you want to to even further um, help these help these pinchers be spread out even more you can take a couple of wraps back with your with your um, cactus chenille you can take a couple of extra wraps back it'll firm that center up right there but with this medium I don't really feel that it's necessary so I'm not going to I think it's gonna I think it adds more bulk than what's necessary and I just leave it right as it sits but if I have something if I'm working with like um, a small or even a uh, and a staz I'll, I'll definitely go back and help flare those pinchers out just a little bit extra but in this case like I said I don't think it's really necessary so now we'll go in and we'll tone down our thread there I don't get really too worked up on the overall length that I have that head there the biggest thing that I want to make sure is that those that rabbit is secure for one and two um, I have a good profile right through there obviously I'm not going to bring that the, that thread the whole way back here but you can see there's probably an eighth of an inch right there to where I have that thread portion um, going forward from from the pinchers we're going to have that all covered up here in a little bit anyhow so like I said I don't get too worked up about the the length of it so now we just want one small six aught bead there we go and couple that with some 19 strand wire set that off to the side and then we're going to go with the size four I think I mentioned oh, maybe I didn't the, the, the back hook is a size six from MFC it's a 7050 the front's a size four I'll have all of that in the description here at the bottom under the video as far as the material list goes so if you need to reference it that's where it'll be now we'll just get a quick thread base down kind of open loop this back to where we're going to put our eyes in and grab some zap there these are small painted lead eyes yellow obviously and we'll go ahead and just get that tied in here we'll figure eight over top of that flip these around we'll throw some zap on this make sure that everything's nice and even and then we'll go ahead and get the back section connected My zap's starting to get down to the bottom here so we'll just touch that with a little bit of glue right on the top and bottom of our lead eyes get that set off to the side and then we'll make some more wraps just to secure this up we'll go figure eight and then we'll go right around the eyes themselves not really going around the hook at all figure eight once again and before we tie in our back section make sure that the eyes are nice and even everything looks pretty good there so now we're on to the connection and 
We want a nice up and down motion on the tail for this is what we're after. So we're gonna have our connection shorter than what we would typically have any articulated fly. So we're really gonna bring this in tight. Um, not so much to where we're gonna restrict the motion, but we are gonna have this a lot tighter than what we'll typically have our connection on the other articulated flies. So there you can see, as that bead goes back, I want that in there even a little bit more yet. Just a little bit more. There we go. I got probably half of the width of the bead for my connection back there. And then I'm gonna go underneath this, clear everything up, and then we're gonna bring our wire back and we're gonna double this over just to secure our wire a little bit better. So here we have that portion. Dang rabbits all over the place. We've got that portion ready to go. Now we're gonna turn this around. Like I said, we're just gonna double our wire over, give us a little bit more security. I'm not taking it all the way up to the eyes. I'm leaving myself a little bit of space because I'm gonna tie in some rubber legs and then my collar for the deer hair head. So now I'm gonna take and just trim this. There's one. There's two. We've got that all squared away. Work that to the back and then we're gonna really tighten down on these wires. Just to give some uniformity to that body. So now we're gonna go in three steps here, we're gonna take this uh, excess, we're gonna use this excess that we cut off, this is gonna be our skirt portion, and we're gonna tie this in as our cover, going back to the bead. So I just want that going back into the pincher section, or the legs, however you reference them right like so, right down the side. Like that, one on each side, and then I'll do one a little bit heavier on the top portion. So here we've got another section right here. Try not to get too much of the hide. I got a little piece of it. I'm gonna run that the same distance going down the back. Like I said, this is just our cover section. This is just a skirt, just to cover between the two hooks here. And then I wanna go right on the top. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take one piece right on the top. If you don't wanna do this top one, you don't have to. Um, it's not absolutely necessary. I just like doing it. I think it looks a little bit cleaner um, going that way. So like I said, I'm gonna take a little bit extra. Get around my fingers. And then we're gonna take this right over the top portion nice and clean everything looks pretty good so I'm going to take that set that off to the side before I go back into the body I'm going to take some brassy wire here and tie this in this is going to be the counter wrap to our hackle Get that wire set in. A 
rotate that over and we're set we're ready to go on with the rest of our fly so we're going to tie our body in peel some of these strands back so you're getting just to that cotton you're not creating extra bulk on the body not creating a bump but you're still nice and secure and then we'll advance this right up to where we left off with our wire where we brought them back and doubled it over so there we have that go ahead and take your body and start working that forward three to four turns give it a good pull I think I want to get yeah that one extra one right there looks pretty good and then we'll just go ahead and trim this off pretty simple right through that portion there make sure that your wire is still clear everything's good got your connection everything the skirt still looks clean. You can see right over the top there. Everything's looking pretty good for us. We're moving right along on this fly. Now I'm going to go into, this is a Grizzly variant schloppen. And I want to find something on the shorter side. Uh, something on the shorter side here. That might work. That might work. So it's got a little bit of black in it. It's got a little bit of a little bit of olive. This one's more on the olive side. Some of them ones, if I can get it, where it has the uh, it has like that greenish blue sheen on the black portion right here. Some of them, if I can get those, I mean, that's, that's, really, um, that's really a bonus right there. I like the way that that stuff looks. But that's me getting really picky on, on stuff. Anything in this realm's going to work for you. So just a grizzly variant uh, olive schlopping. So now... I know this is pretty short. I'm gonna grab my hackle pliers. We got our half hitch and then get my hand out of the way. Just run that right to the back. You've got some good coverage right there, nice even spacing. too happy with that last turn there we go let's see if I can get one more in there nah I'm gonna leave it how it sits I'm gonna bring this the opposite direction that I wrapped my hackle capture that in place and then just Just rip that right through there, like so. Then we can go ahead and tie that off. Grab the other scissors and we'll go ahead and trim this. Trim this tag end off of our slopping. Everything's looking good, everything's clean. We're ready to go on to the legs and then finish this off on the head so once again I'm gonna go with a set of three rubber legs on this this is the pumpkin and blue I haven't found anything quite in the blue and uh, all of color scheme just yet I'm sure it's not long before we'll see it these guys are constantly bringing out different colors so. The black dog's not happy about something back there. There we go. We'll set those down. 
I just have those nice loose wraps on there right now and then I'm gonna pull straight down and tighten that up. My legs are locked into place. Um, you can leave these hang for now. You can cut it, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Right like so. My legs are going back into the pincher section. I could probably trim those up a little bit, but I'm gonna leave them for now. I'm gonna leave them for now. I'll take a look at it once I've got a finished product. So, grab a straw, capture all your material here. Get that out of your way. That straw doesn't quite wanna go around. There we go. We've got all of our material out of the way now. And now we're into the really fun portion of this if you like working with deer hair. If you don't like working with deer hair, you're probably not gonna find this too fun. But this is the portion that I really like that really sets this fly apart. Um, one thing I will say is that finding consistency in your colors from the deer hair to the rabbit to um, your body, everything. It, it's gonna be a little tough to get everything really consistent, but uh, as long as we have that olive and blue theme on it, I'm pretty happy with, with it. So we're gonna form our collar here first. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of blue. That's a fluorescent blue. And then a little bit of olive. I found an olive that was a little bit toned down. Or a little bit brighter, I should say. And I think it mixes a little bit better. A lot of the olive that I have back there is like a, a deep or a dark olive. This is a little bit on the lighter side, so I'm probably gonna go on this. I'm gonna go about two times the amount of olive that I have, or compared to the blue. And then I'm gonna just gonna take this, I'm gonna take a little bit of blue out, a little bit more than what I wanted, and then I'm gonna take two times that with the olive, like I said, and I'm just bringing this in my hand and I'm shuffling it like a deck of cards. Just shuffle on it like a deck of cards. Just getting a good mix in there between the blue and the olive. Once you're happy with it, you feel you have a pretty good blend. Um, you can go ahead and throw this in the stacker. And then we'll even everything up here. When you do this, um, I think I've said this before on, on one of the videos where I'm mixing maybe the DFT or something. When you're doing this, grab more than what you think that you're going to need because inevitably you're going to wind up dropping a little bit of this. Um, and if you don't go over on what you think you're going to need, you're going to wind up with pretty sparse color. So. Grab a little bit extra. If you have to, once you get it in your hand, you put it on the put it on the hook, you look at it and it's too much, you can always take some out, but it's it's pretty difficult to get it added on there, you know, and to keep everything nice and even. So not a really long collar on this. I want to go back to the point of my hook is probably going to be the furthest back that I'm going to go on with this collar. I'm gonna take and trim that. You can see the nice color mix that we have right through there. I'm gonna take this and I want this just nice and clean. The only thing this is is a collar, that is it. And I wanna pull that straight down, get that locked into place. Before I go really tight on that back section, I'm just gonna flare that out, give myself a nice half moon, one, two, and then lock that down. You can see the nice mix that we have between the olive and the blue. Really sets that off nicely. So now, what we're gonna do, because this is a mini, 
you know, all this stuff out of my eyes first. I'm gonna go one stack on top, one on the bottom, and then I'm gonna spin one in the front to finish this up. So I'm just gonna take three stacks out. Right now I'm gonna set them all in a comb. I'll get them mixed up. That way I won't have to go back and forth to the deer hair. Like I said before, make sure that you grab extra than what you think you're gonna need because you're gonna drop some as you're going through that shuffling process. That's probably enough for two right there, honestly, but I'll just leave it. I'll take some out if I have to. Once again, back to the blue. I'm gonna take three stacks of this. That one's gonna be enough for the front, so I'll set that one right there. And then this will be at the bottom, so I'll take a little bit less than what I took on the previous two. And then clean that out. Everything looks good so far here. I'm gonna set that one right there. Now I'm gonna double over, or I'm gonna go on top of my blue with the olive. Clean out your, your hair. I'll set that stack right on the top. Same with this. Clean this out. The blue, because it is so bright, has a tendency to take over this fly. So that's why I try to go two times all of, of what I have in blue. And it seems to, seems to make that fly look a lot better to me. If you want more blue in it, obviously just cut down your olive. If you want blue to be your dominant color, just cut down your olive a little bit. So there we go. We've got everything sitting how we want it. Like I was saying before, this is gonna be my bottom stack, so it's gonna be the least amount of hair out of all three stacks. And that blue is looking way too dominant to start off there, so I wanna take some of that out. Take some of that out. And then we're just shuffling this around, getting a good mix, just like we did with our collar. I still have a decent amount of blue in there. That's starting to look better to me. It's starting to look better. I'm just gonna shuffle this around a little bit more till I'm happy with it. And then I wanna even this stuff up not that I'm using the tips on it, I just want to make sure that I have consistently the most hollow portion to work with because I shuffled these around pretty good. I just want to bring those tips somewhat even and then that's going to give me nice hollow portions to work with on this bottom side. So then I'm going to take and cut the tips off. If you want to, you can dust this, even that stuff up, however you want to go about it. We'll even that up slightly. Now, this bottom bundle is what I'm gonna throw in first. And I just wanna go one wrap, two, and then on my third, I'm just pulling straight down and it's gonna flare that out. We've got our bottom portion ready to go. Uh, let me see here. This was my top one. I can already tell it's gonna to be too heavy. I need to take some of each out. Pretty heavy. All right. So then back to the shuffling portion. Nothing really new on this. Cleaning everything out real nice. Getting a good even mix. If you see something that's a little heavy Go ahead and take that out. Now, that blue was a little bit wild to me, so I just had to tone that down a touch. 
shuffling that up I feel like I have a pretty good mix once again there you can see the bundle that I'm working with there's the blue and olive portion good proportions on both of them some longer hairs there in the front once again just tap this in the stacker a few times get everything somewhat even and then we'll trim off our tips in our back portion once again that's a good amount of hair I want to take a little bit out there so trim the tips even this stuff in, up in the back I still have a little bit too much hair there Once again, find your center section. Get the get the most hollow portion of this while still being nice and even. I'll set this on the top. One, two, and then get a third. I'll pull this down right behind the eyes. We're just about set on this fly. We've got one more to spin in the front. I just want to clean that up slightly. Get to the center portion between your eyes, your lead eyes, and the eye of the hook. Set your thread right there. Uh, take out some of that blue. Take out some of that blue. Just mix this last section up. Get everything how you want it here. And remember that we're going to be spinning this one. Um, so we don't have to stack on the top and the bottom. I think I could use just a little bit more olive on this. So I want to take just a little bit out. I feel like one of the lights flickered or something there. I want to take just a little bit of that out, clean that up, add this to my stack that I already have here, and then get that mixed around just to tone down that blue slightly. That's looking pretty good. Once again, toss this in the stacker. Even that section up, we'll cut our portions off that we don't want. too concentrated with the blue so then I just want to set this in I want to grab this right on the top here make sure that I'm going right down the center I'm catching my hook on the underneath side I probably blocked the camera right there two I'll get a half and then I'm just gonna pull this around and get a good spin of hair right in that front section now it's it's a decent amount of hair remember that it is belly hair we're not doing this with uh, with body hair so you can you can overdo the amount of hair that you use really easy with the belly hair this is still pretty loose um, you can see I barely had to to push that hair back to get my eye exposed some hair in there that's wanting to go forward. Two, three, and then one, two, three. Like I was saying, just be careful, be mindful about the amount of hair that you're putting in these in this pattern if you're working with belly hair, because 
it can make this a flotation device really quick if you get that too compact. Make sure that you're mindful of how much you're putting on there. And now for the last step on this, I'm gonna get a fresh blade. We're gonna trim this hair up. That looks pretty good. There we go. I knew I had a spare comb sitting around there somewhere. So I'm just gonna fluff this out. I'm gonna dress this up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to trim. Set that off to the side. We're gonna go with our new blade. You can start on the top or the bottom on this one. It really doesn't matter too awful much. It's gonna be a rounded head either way. So I'm just gonna go on to the top and I'm just gonna round this up. I'm aiming right for the tips on the, what is typically a collar. Just rounding that section off a little bit making broad cuts to start. Coming around on the bottom side here and we will go, yeah, that'll work. Just a nice broad cut to get us a start there. Push that to the back and round this off. All right, we're starting to come into shape here slightly. It's still going to take a little bit of trim work here. We're going to start fine-tuning this, and for a new blade, this thing kind of sucks. This thing's not the best. Just working our way around here. Just working our way around. We're rounding this head off, like I was saying at the beginning. We're rounding this off. And then another thing, like I was saying, with being mindful about not getting too much hair on this, also be mindful to not trim this, if you're working with the belly hair, to not trim this so tight to where it's gonna be like a popper. And that's gonna, like I said, be a flotation device for you. You want water to be able to get in between these individual fibers to help this thing sink. Obviously, the lead eyes are going to help you tremendously on that. Um, if you feel that you need more weight, you can go up from the small to a medium, but the medium eyes look kind of lost to me or they, they, uh, they seem to be a little bit too much to me, I should say. So now I'm just going around here, I'm trimming this up. You can see that nice rounded portion that I have. I want that even a little bit less than what I have, so I'm gonna exaggerate this pass through. nice and rounded portion on this bottom. You can see the mix that we have with the blue and the, the olive. Things are starting to come into shape for us here. I just wanna take one more pass right over the top here. Catch some of these stragglers that are bleeding into the collar. And then just a fan that blade through there, pick some of this excess off. And now what I want to do is find my eyes. So, get a couple of those out of there. I'm gonna to go to the scissors now. And I'm just gonna trim these eyes out to where I can see them. I wanna have good visibility on those eyes. They're kind of recessed on that side. Same thing here, I just wanna go right into 
that hair and trim my eyes out. One side got a little bit more compact than the other. There we go. We're starting to see those pretty good now. You can see the eyes on that section now. I'm still going to trim that out a little bit more. I want to. I want that to be a little bit more visible, like it is on this side. I like that eye the way that it's sitting. So I'll, I'll work on that here before the final uh, product, or before I call it a finished product, I should say. I'm gonna take my straw off. Get that set off to the side. We'll bring our legs down. You can see all of our hackles still exposed underneath. We've got a nice looking section for that body right there. Nice connection on the skirt. Let me even this out. That's wanting to rotate on me a little bit. We've got a nice clean blue and olive head on this. And what I'll do, so we can get a better view of this, is I'm going to raise this up and rotate it slightly, right like so, and then just give this a quick spin. Got a couple of pieces of deer hair that got messed up by the straw. There we go. You've got a nice blue and olive Nancy P. Like I said, springtime on the Missouri, I don't care what hatch is coming off. I don't care what's going on. The Missouri can have squalas coming down from the Dearborn and they're blowing them up like crazy. I'm not tying one on. This is the pattern that's being fished on the mow. And it's like I said, just absolutely killer pattern. That was a long video on the Nancy. I hope I got as much detail in there as possible. I know mixing the deer hair and everything uh, took a little bit of extra time, but I hope we got through that and explained some stuff and you're able to tie this one on your own. But if you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. Thanks as always for watching. We'll catch you next Wednesday.